He's a very approachable person. He is of many characters. He is firm in terms of discipline. He is firm in terms of uh, keeping values. Ndinoda kutenda ne chipo chatakapiwa mumuri. Chipo icho cho takachiona vachiri kukura kwavanga vachiita. Eh inyango ndandiri mudiki. Ndaingoona ne the way we were interacting with him. Pane zvini zose kungave mukushanda, kungave mukutaura kana kuita basa pamba. Tichi kataenda kumafuro. Tinenge tichitamba kana ari mazuva anenge Ingua Yokuti, Yuava Maka, Embra Yokuna, Turned up with Chino, Chino, Chino Tiva, Utida. Munguato to Trasuka to Norita. We Takanga Tisinga Tisinga Rash, Mom, Tasing Gate. Ningati Nipa nineteen fifty five. Baba Pavaka Bona Kutia, Macha, we did an in a map, Munomnik. Do Pavaka decide that Baba Kusumka Quinta Kuzampi. Vasumka Kudaru, Bana Buti, Vana Buti, Emerson, Baka Sara, Banga Kusko, Statich Tivadik. She know Badaka Kura Tosi, Taka the Dutch Kor Taka the Dutch Koro. Pakavaki Guain Bayaki, Dopaiva Nichikor Tikadiza, nineteen forty four, Tikachi Visa pa name Bayaki Toysapa Pashiri Che Primary Lundi School, nineteen forty four, to Batagasa every December Baba Kanavavura and Mombe, Tinning it is what new sign. You know, December ending Gurungu Kurim. Kumana Munuma Puachipani Jokunurim Saka inini, the Capua Chipani Chavo, but in Tim Fan Bemberico and Mombe. Eh, you are Chibaka Batabata. Sakaka Shuka Churu, Doku Kunura, Kamukam Bamba, Raganunzi, a menu Sitakanunzi, Fano, a menu to Fana way. Dokundi kandi ramberi kwa ndani ndiyo kanzi. Oh, mfana, ilamshonga wenye ukawu. Inido kutora, avacha ndi wuziku tunolja waka wanda se. Nitore ka nangakaya ka muromo. Chitenga tenga kuno shika kubuda road mtara we ramberi kwa ndani ndakatunga mira ana kuzobudiza ruri mi gua zimba kudai. Yuo wa fano kusenga kwa ruri benzi wa uangaji la zozi ni katamna kundi wuza ni ruri mi gua zimba. Kinda kumba manje. Koma mite imwa na kwanza benziri. Damti ni damtu mshonga we nyoka yendo kulaka nanga kose. Wafa nukuseka kava ruma. Kana mkuu na maki yapa. Nda kava ruma. Nda zina ano tinda ikaranya ma. Kose kukaranya ma zuku tima kulenya ma inindi sina. Wape zachikoro koko boarding kwa wangu wa diwa kazo nda kukafiwe. Secondary school. Nuko nuzi zaku ya. Tawa kwa vagwa ni politics that's it called the Kusambi. Vavarigua Kudero, Vaka Vav, Dokutaka Ime Kos Ku Hodgson, Dokunita Kosi Koko Wakita precaring Ika Vagwa foot because of politics. Sagando Pavaka Vandokunta Ku Copa Belt. Copa Belt kwa kuna Sisiva Kuru Festival. Dokuaka Mtanga Kushanda Shanda. But the second father, I papa, Mukushanda, Kwa, Sarah, the Yawe, Kutanga, 
Je suis un homme qui a été très nice Saka from there, tango so na disappear. Acha 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 na communication na wu. Kandi wa inda kupi Tanzania. Tanzania kuya zita ka dawa ka daro. Tika so na tamba mu 1964. Tamba yowu ya kuna na baba kuti daddy na mama don't worry. Ini ndi rimpenyu. Ndaka to na parindara maini ni wa. My Jesu, Mary, quite bring that Mary, Dakari Wona, Vantoseka. From there, Swakas, the sea at Sazotivari, can divide up China, Czechoslovakia. She's on Zwa, Bakazonura Sambaimo, Zivaku Czechoslovakia, it's a Yakum Shakuna. That was nineteen sixty four. Sixty five, Ah, Vasu. Zimbabwe, in the end, I will go to college, the Chita Nessing, Ronald Rose Hospital. Saka Quiet Nessing, the Awam, Swati Candice, Wakada, Swata, Tines Wapa Red Saka Nia Zachokans and Gatunga Guavari Tunga Wakufa, very five. Pa five, I have a five, four was Vaka Burai. Va Tonga Kuti ten years. Information Baba, you know that is age. Zambian. Baba Baba Vangava denounced Zimbabwean Rhodesian citizen, Vavi in Northern Rhodesia. Saka Waka Tiono, Manawi, Mu Zambian. Saka Gachi Sungwa. Ten years, ten years is okay. Buda Obam Jerry Barungu Karequa and Majon, Kakakusama, Prisa, Kawaya Majon, Vipeka, Patty, Ape the sentence yake majoni akawuya asati abuda. Okanzi unom chenge tayere unom ziva tayere gati eh unom ziva. Okanzi mo chenge tana pano tayere gati abodo atinga chenge tani. Nukuti mazwaiwa okanawa injiko auchiti uno taura zuma tonge gwenika wai bato gwaenda kujere. UID Doku do do babam bam deport. Akam tora and then I go Victoria Falls. I'm in my family right. As my swear, I walk out with snatch motor. Zako zako ando. Swear as a team. I can only sit at Victoria Falls. Doku tivas kapa Victoria Falls. Doku muyambusa. Doku enda ku. The first day he went into prison, this is a serious story, and he was telling to some young people, uh, when he got into prison, in solitary confinement, after he was uh, 
relieved of uh, death sentence. And the, it was dark and uh, he had not eaten and uh, they threw the food inside and when instead of looking for that food he started going around and he emptied the plate so he couldn't eat. So the next time of course he cleaned and gave them the plate because he couldn't eat from the floor. The next time when he got the food he was so hungry he went on his knees and his foes to Changazira Chikaf Kutivachiwane and you couldn't tell whether this is good food or not good food and he ate. Kwa ipani nguwa zimu zo kutiva kaisa chava kaisa pandi zo kutiva bombu so kuita kuti chika mola ita motoku umanya motoku tu uyo zodi but kwa yakunu murungu muangaka kwa yaka sunka chitura ka kanda panze chika to putika uku kwanza ya wasilaki ito charingi ya vayi wanayi then he was torturing me. I was saying, "I was saying, 'I 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 was who was in the room started crying. How can they do that to you? He says, ah, but it already happened, I'm okay. <laughs> While in prison, he had been studying, uh, doing his legal studies. And uh, what he came to the university for was to complete his program, his legal studies program. So, because he had done quite a number of courses in, in prison, he didn't spend uh, the full term of four years. He spent uh, only two years, from 1973 to, I think, 1975. That's when he graduated. So that uh, is how we met. And uh, I was part of a group of uh, Zimbabwean students that uh, arrived in 1973, uh, together with uh, uh, the head of state. But, uh, I think it's important to highlight the fact that uh, Zimbabwe was uh, perhaps uh, Zimbabwe had the largest group of students, foreign students, at the University of Zambia. We had students from all over the place, but uh, Zimbabwe had the largest. And uh, so it was not like I met him uh, separately. It was a group of us who were uh, meeting with him. I think the, the important thing to highlight is that uh, although we were together at uh, the university, we were not in the same sort of category. Remember that we had just come out of secondary school. We, we were young boys and girls. We had no credentials to show. And uh, here was uh, Comrade Nangagwa. We had uh, achieved many successes in terms of uh, his experience. He had uh, been trained as a freedom fighter. Uh, he had operated in the country, had been arrested, and had served a jail term 10 years. His issue, his name had been discussed in various countries, various, uh, you know, published in various newspapers and, and so on and so on. So he was a national figure. Seventy-three years of Bavachata, named my wife Jenny Mataris. The late, she's late. That's the first wife. Nineteen seventy-six years of Bavita Manawo Marai. Seventy-six, seventy-seven. Tasiwa. Why ita kamuti Tasiwa? No kuti Tasiwa akabere kwa mu four days time Baba was Bavacha ika ni bus accident. And the late Ara Jim Gabe. Can you come to Maputo? I want you to be assistant, one special assistant. Sakabaka 
Tachi ngeta baba wati vasumu kwa inda kumaputu. It was in 1977 when uh, Comrade E.D. Munangagwa came to rejoin the struggle in Mozambique. But we had information already at Shimoyo uh, of what type of an individual he was. Uh, we have had that time an engagement with quite a number of the leaders, uh, Comrade Tongo Gara and others, and we had also had gone through the ideological training at Chitepo College. So we learned about our own leadership, but for his was amazing because we also traced uh, where he had come from, that uh, he was in Zambia, and in Zambia, he had been persuaded to join uh, Zapu at a very tender age of 20, uh, and uh, he was sent for training uh, to, to Tanzania, then Tanzania to China, then from China to Zambia. And we also learned about his uh, exposure uh, to some bombing which happened uh, in Victoria, uh, Fort Victoria uh, then. And also his uh, detainment, uh, imprisonment, and that he had escaped uh, death was sent back and he trained as a constitutional lawyer, worked with uh, the likes of uh, our chairman, the late chairman, Comrade uh, Chitepo. So he was quite an interesting uh, leader who was quite knowledgeable in a lot of things. Uh, as soon as he came in, he was absorbed uh, to be part of the strategist and advisor of the president. So he worked as a special assistant to the president of San Comrade Mugabe. President Mnangagwa, he had total loyalty to Mugabe. Total, unflinching. He was very close to President Mugabe. And I think President Mugabe relied on him implicitly. So everything that President Mugabe wanted done would be done immediately because I think uh, Comrade Munangagwa is a very good manager. The relationship yaboi yakava kikava wachiri mu prison. Kana kuti president the late vaka wana tika mukoma naka. Zikos vari maputu kwa vakati. I want a special assistant to me. Bana Jos, bana Josia Tongo Gara, bana Nivo Swangwa Riko, bana Mzinda, bana Nia. Vakati no, imuchu zai muno amunoda to be your special assistant. Vakati kuna kako mana kanz Emerson nangaku kanzia pariko kusambi. Ndopa vaka nyuri ratsamba kutivuya utukudi kama na president. And that's why we are able to have a legacy. He separated what happened in the last weeks or few uh, days from what he knew about this man. Uh, so, and all of us, even some of us, uh, can't begrudge President Mugabe, uh, because we knew we were following President Mugabe, but our mentor had total loyalty. So loyalty became the catchword. Uh, you had to be total loyal. I knew that the relationship was too close. I knew that the qualities were too close. I knew that the qualities were too close. They spend more time together than anyone else, the two of them, by virtue of his own position of advising the president. He straight away started off by making sure that uh, the security and intelligence department is professionalized. This is why, why, where I was also picked uh, among few uh, cadres who, uh, who passed an exam to be trained 
as a security, there were two divisions, two categories. One was, uh, it was uh, some were trained in security, I was trained in intelligence. So he was well, he was a well versatile man who would deal with intelligent issues, intelligence issues, also the issues of the United Nations, uh, AU also, so kept collecting information and also uh, briefing the president, being by virtue of being in that office. And also uh, being in touch uh, with uh, uh, Commander uh, Komre Tongogara. You can imagine being well briefed also with what was happening uh, in our camps and also in the front. And he was like the vehicle visiting the camps all the time and uh, mingling with us you know you could carry out a conversation he was open-minded uh, engaged uh, with uh, with all of us for me it was educative it gave, it gave me courage and strength because for me it made me it made me much stronger than I was even during the struggle. He's a very good father. Um, he may not have the time to spend with us. I mean, he's been in government since 1980. So we've had to grow up with a father who's very busy. Um, but when it matters, he's there. And where it matters, which is education and providing for you and making sure um, you lack for nothing, you know, he, he, he does that which is a good thing. Munu anoda muri yake. Munu ane chido ne muri. Ana kuti wano sarzo tu imano omu imba ipi, imano omu imba ipi. Ah, chefu muna gasunungu. Doto nzo wama ito zanza, ah, zanza vata uriki na avu. Apana, paripa imwe nguwe kuti, indi no mwa. Nzo, ah, jowe uya bana. I remember when I was going to school, he's the one who encouraged me in the early 80s to say, you guys, you're still very young, you must go to school. So I was at People's College. And then from People's College, I went to Arare High. I was doing accounts at all level, accounts and, and economics, together with the, the former commissioner, Chiuri. So, you know what we used to do? We used to go to his office and say, go to President, Marie Mabuka is Kukwana. What can we do? Toyo Swaga Marie Mabuka. And oh, Maburuzi. We were principals of accounts, we were this and that and that and that. And then he would say, okay, come tomorrow morning. And then we go to his office. Yes, the money, go and get your books. And it's true, I would get the books, bring the receipts. <laughs> He is some person who you should never judge from the surface. He is a very kind-hearted person. He, he has got a, 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 a lots of emotions. When I first went to university, he's the one who, who took me to university. I, I went to University of Birmingham. Uh, for my undergrad degree so he now when we were leaving when he was leaving he he pulled me aside and said uh, Farai you know I'm very proud of you um, and it's the first time that he said this remember I said he's a very traditional man where hugging and like you know father saying I love you to their daughters just doesn't happen but it happened this time I was at university where about he was about to leave and then he said to me I'm very, very proud of you, Farai. Uh, and I've always wanted this 
um, in, in my life that I'll be able to educate my children and that you know my children can get to university the first one um, in our family I think obviously for my generation uh, to go to to university and and I love you you know and he almost had like wet eyes I mean he didn't cry but you could see he was feeling emotional and I was just like wow you know this is it was so important for him um, that I went to university or that his children were educated. I normally used to go to school with the driver. I think this was now when I was, I think in, in Form 1, or Form 1. And, um, you know, from Tinwald to St. John's College, was a, it's a very long drive. So I think something had happened, the driver wasn't able to come through that morning and he then decided to take me. And um, I remember, I remember he still has that car till today, it's, it's parked, his S320, the S class. Um, I'll never forget that day because of the way he was driving. I was late, but he made sure he <laughs> would get me to school in time. He's a very approachable person and uh, some people uh, who don't know him much think he's a difficult person but he is not. And uh, if you are not careful, he will start saving you uh, before you save him. He is firm in terms of discipline, he is firm in terms of uh, keeping values and um, you know, uh, things that, uh, doing things that, uh, that should be done and doing them properly. Ivo Pachabo, Avadi Nema, one of the straightforward information is required. He is of many characters. He can be fierce, there's no question, uh, but uh, his usual life is he will do anything to help somebody. He has a lot of respect for people, young, uh, middle aged old ones. And that is not the kind of person who's going to yell at you or beat you up. No, 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 no. It's for him, it's his words. He just tells you one thing or one, one or two things and it will get to you and you will see the disappointment in his eyes and that's enough punishment for you. But on this particular day, he got out his belt and he walloped me. And oh my goodness, I, did not, I could not believe he did that. But that was the first and last time. Uh, so he doesn't, you know, he's never believed in corporate punishment, but uh, he'll endeavor to make sure you understand um, why you're wrong. I had friends come over, um, this was in Tinwald at the farm, I had friends come over and we were kids, I think we were like, I can't remember, grade 6, grade 7 or even younger and you know at the farm there was a place where all the, the logistics trucks used to be, my Bamnin's tr trucking company which he was doing in partnership with my dad. and. And uh, there was, some of them hadn't been driven for a while. So now as kids, we're thinking these trucks don't work anymore. And having a good time as kids, you know, this is a farm and these dusty old trucks. Let's just be destructive. Um, then my mom found out about it. This is when my mom was still alive. She then found out about it and she was like, well, I think we got a beating. I got the beating, my friends had gone. And um, she was like, This is after I've been beaten, so I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Right? Now, uh, come night time when he's coming back from work, he used to come home around 6 7, and yeah, you would hear the car. There's a car driving up the driveway and he would always play his radio very loud. So he would always play news. Anytime it was news time, it was loud. Ooh, you could always hear the news. And you're like, okay, yes, that's dead. So engine switches off. 
footsteps are coming down the, the walkway, the door opens. I'm in my bedroom and I'm shivering and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm probably going to die tonight because now this is my time I'm going to do it. My father's going to discipline me. Um, then I hear, you know, in the dining room, my mom and dad were having a conversation. I could hear them talking, talking, hey, what, yeah, I'm my window. Hey, what, what, what? Hey, I don't know what to do. I'm in bedroom. Amazon. <laughs> that walk to the dining room was very dreadful. Um, got to the dining room and then he was like, "Did you explain what happened?" So I just told him I didn't know that these trucks were what because they were just they've been parked here for a long time and where kids were having fun. He sat there for for like a minute or so with. A very heavy face and he was like never do it again for me that was enough that was enough punishment so I thought he was gonna beat me he didn't beat me he just said never do it again and I took that with a very heavy heavy heart and I was like you no know, if he says I'm, I, I've learned my lesson that's that's how much authority he has he just needs to say words and it's enough what uh, happened before, during uh, those, um, uh, what you call them, uh, where do, uh, youth rallies or whatever, I, I think you were talking to a man who could, who could uh, see, you could hear, but he did not take it to heart. Yeah, and uh, that's why the last one, the last interface, after, after the Blauwayo thing, he tells me, He's the only one who went to see off the, the president at the airport. And when he tried to say goodbye to the president, he said that was a good speech. And, uh, but Grace re refused to, greet, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to shake uh, him for goodbye. But he was able to go there. Others didn't go there. You know, the strength that he had, this is where I have respect for him. The strength, the courage, and the power to consume all what happened to him. Suzakai power and the power and the Kushi Terrier. I know the Tora Quita Chinch Snap Bass as in Beru Quanches were going in. Those are gonna kill. I'm going to go retaliate. Dad is very tolerant. Um, uh, in a way that you know I can't even understand and uh, or, or emulate it's it's not easy to just keep giving your other cheek for someone to keep slapping I mean the Bible says we should do that but mm, it takes a special kind of person to kind of tolerate that and on national TV as well oh, it was um, it was difficult. It was very difficult. So we found comfort in talking to each other as, as siblings, um, talking to my brothers, finding out, you know, but what is going on here? What is the end game? You know, and you look at uh, both parents uh, during these rallies, mom, dad sitting there, you know, straight faced, poker face, um, not saying anything, not retaliating, not you know, I would expect the very least to stand up and get off the stage, but no, they just sat there and, and took all those insults in. We went through a very tough time, the two of us. And I remember at one point at the end, I went to the president and I said, Your Excellency, I, I know you smile, uh, you take these issues lightly, but there is a possibility that these people can even kill us because you can't denounce a man of your character and your level without doing something about it. For a lot of us, me included, I mean, when I really was, uh, uh, I couldn't understand what was happening. That was the second rally of Grace in Mount Darwin. And from that time, I said, no, I don't want anything to do with this. And I never attended those meetings. But an amazing 
uh, person like in, in the name of uh, President E.D. Munanga, he, he, he attended almost all of them except the one, uh, the one which came after when he was poisoned in Gwanda. I was hanging out with some friends somewhere and next thing I'm getting a phone call or it was on the news or messages were coming in, but is, is, is everything okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. He's like, yeah, my dad was poisoned, dad was poisoned. Did you know about it? I'm like, is this true? You know, doing my research for phoning around, um, only to find out that it was true. 30 papa, just imagine. Farah called me, Tete, we went up. I want to tell you something. I don't know whether you're going to hold yourself, but uh, my husband has told him, because Kovana Baba and Zansati, do not worry about it. You got right where the other girls can slide downstairs. No, kuti imbaya ati zoraki na upstairs. You got wadani. All the sisters, no kura pam so. You got let us pray. That's that's all we could do. There was no way that we could. Um, we could do anything else and like I said earlier because we're a praying family it meant for us God is what makes the difference God is who we needed to talk to prayed and prayed and prayed up to eight o'clock when the guys were in the past Tavi was strong joining each other party and okay to Sakanaka early in the morning my four o'clock that rang on a fire equity we start off my five going to Arari my four o'clock on the phone, my my guru, but he, Muri Kupi, we want to come and see, and I know we are going to South Africa. The next time I saw him personally was in South Africa when he was recovering in hospital. Um, he he was obviously fit now, sitting up and talking. Um, and I was asking him, you know, are you sure you're okay? Because, you know, a father being a father, he's not likely to say to me, oh, you know, um, this is how bad it is, or I'm dying, or whatever. So you still have that fear that something could be wrong. The doctors uh, made it clear that it was a miracle that he had survived. And the resilience that I saw, um, if perhaps there were other people we could have had war in this country, but very patient. And we are very lucky as Zimbabwe to have a man of that stature and character, where even after having gone through that, he made a declaration to say, as Zimbabweans, let bygones be bygones. Oh, he's a hardworking man. He, he actually is so committed to work that he's got very little time for himself. I, I, I have seen a man who, who is almost uh, selfless, uh, who, who never really thinks about himself. And sometimes even his family, personal family, he is a man who just uh, thinks about Zimbabwe and making Zimbabwe a wonderful place for all Zimbabweans. On work ethics, he doesn't seem to care about his health. That is my worry. He works 24-7. Even when uh, uh, he is in cabinet, uh, if I can reveal this, you, you see people giving their best because of the way he chairs. Uh, at one time you are laughing, but you are also serious. Uh, you don't feel you're under pressure. The only pressure you have is to give, to give, to give to the collective. But that takes uh, uh, strong leadership. He is a man who wants, very practical, but he wants to see results. He is result oriented. Uh, I, I must say, if you're working under him, you really have to, this, to be strong. Uh, he expects perfection and nothing else. And for some of us who worked with him, we, we have no option but to work very hard to make sure that uh, we achieve his vision 2030.
And I can assure you, with the abundant resources that we have in Zimbabwe, within the shortest time possible, every time he's well traveled, he knows the developments in other countries. Even if there are sanctions, he has now said to all of us, we have abandoned resources. He is going to, he is tapping on those resources. The education which we invested in all this time, we want to see now that education being turned into goods. This is what he is doing now to say the base is there, the foundation is there. Now he is a lucky man. He's taking advantage of this and saying, we need roads. Can we come up with a material so that we can tar our own roads? We can use our local resources. That's what he's doing. Otherwise, can you imagine we could by now be having huge debts? But he said, no, we have everything in Zimbabwe. Our roads from Bight Bridge to Chirundu. We have the companies in Zimbabwe. Why not create our own jobs? Why do we import jobs and export foreign currents out of the country, which we much we need? Land reform. People were not producing. He says production, production, production. Our own Zim dollar had no value. He is saying our value of our Zim dollar must be uh, supported by our own assets. We have plenty gold, we have plenty diamonds now, and we just had, we have million, now over two million uh, uh, gems now within uh, the diamond ZMDC, which means, which has never happened, that's going to be sold, and we are talking about foreign currency. Look at tobacco. Look at now local communities being assisted now to produce and make money, not just making money in Zim dollars, but foreign currency, because they are sourcing markets so that we export the tobacco as a finished product. So he has a clean vision, clear vision. And like before sending raw, raw resources, he is saying value addition in the true sense not statements, true sense. In the sector of defense and security, there is no doubt in my mind that unifying those three armies must stand out as a major thing. And uh, after General Wolves escaped the country and uh, it was thrown into his face to unify those armies and to get the trust of both Zanla, Zipra, and Rhodesians is a major achievement. He has done so much in terms of professionalizing security and intelligence. And he has done what he did during the struggle. He continued even to do that as the Minister of, Minister of National Security, to making sure that the department becomes professional and to make sure that not only does it work within the country, but within the region. In the area of uh, the legislature, uh, when uh, the MDC came in, they came in with a bang and uh, they needed somebody who is both a diplomat, very witty, uh, can, can make uh, the house go into stitches, but antagonists. And you could see it in the legislature uh, that, uh, yeah, the, if we had not yet a speaker of his caliber, uh, that house would have been a zoo, but he couldn't because when he wanted to be firm, he could be. And when he wanted to, uh, to make people laugh, uh, people laugh at themselves, he could do it. And he was a man of his words. And if you are not very careful he, he, in his presence, you wouldn't speak because you know you fear what he's going to say. <laughs> And you could see that the mastery of putting together a working 
antagonistic parliament, it could only have fallen to him. Look at what he has done for the country in the last three years he has been there. Uh, he, you can actually see his vision. He walks his talk. He has uh, talked about uh, Zimbabwe becoming a, a upper middle income uh, uh, society by 2030. And we can actually see the way he's walking towards the 2030. A lot of developments have happened. Uh, in, for a country to prosper, there are economic enablers which needs to be focused on to make sure that an economy develops uh, in terms of roads, the road networks in this country, the amount of work and energy is put into it, despite the fact that we have got sanctions in this country. But he has actually done a lot of work to make sure that even internally, what is that we can do to make sure that uh, we continue to build infrastructure in our country. All this infrastructure, Bait Bridge, Harare Chirundu, Harare Bulawayo, the roads, when you travel on them, you marvel on those roads. It, it's, it means he's thinking, he, he's thinking nothing else about getting to that vision 2030. And then you look at the amount of uh, uh, bowls which have been drilled in the country, the amount of dams because now he understands that water is critical for any kind of development, whether it's agriculture or human consumption. And then you see the way he is thinking fast and ahead of, every, uh, of a lot of those who are in the First Republic. Electricity. You cannot industrialize this country without electricity. He has already found, through his re-engagement and engagement efforts, he has found uh, investors who are already in, uh, working in Wange to make sure that by 2025 we would have something like 5,000 megawatts of uh, electricity. You know at the moment we are actually importing, we don't, we don't produce enough and already President Mnangagwa by 2025 he's saying this country would have more than what we need, we will be actually in a position to export. And look at the way he dealt with uh, unscrupulous uh, business people, corporate companies in this country who were attacking our currency. How he has stabilized that uh, by making sure that he deals with those without fear or favor. And here we are, we, we have got also an auction on the Arab BZ where these companies can actually go and get foreign currency to import whatever inputs they need to produce. And look at how he has made peace in this country. How he has made Zimbabwe to is a unitary. He has dealt with issues like Gukura Wundi, like a human being. I mean, to say, okay, let's talk about it. There's nothing taboo. We are Zimbabweans first before anything else. If there's anything which has gone wrong, let's bring it on the table. Let's talk about it. How he has traveled across the 10 provinces without, without choosing any particular province as a special one, but balancing out all the 10 provinces to make sure that there's development in all the provinces. Look at how he has dealt with uh, making sure that there's money put into devolution so that everyone from the ward level in our, our communities is, is also actively participating in the acti uh, economic activities in their countries. So he's uh, focused on making sure that this country succeeds. And it's a pleasure working uh, for a president like E.J. Munangagwa, who is very focused, who never loses his sleep, or oh, we cannot be dissuaded. He cannot be dissuaded by anything else. His eyeball is making sure that this country becomes a upper middle income society by 2030. And we are seeing all this work he's doing is leading us to there. By any measure of judgment, he has achieved a lot in a very short time. I think the country is going in the uh, right direction under very difficult uh, circumstances. We, we, I think we are lucky to have him as the leader of, of the country at this point in time because uh, the solution to very serious and challenging problems uh, under him, the solution seems to be working and I can only urge people to give him support.